My name is Marsha. So as a child, I was traumatized. Um, my dad's best friend raped me, and I was molested. It was rough. It was hard um, as a child. We were very poor, and my dad was an alcoholic. And um, I was rejected by the little girls, you know, the small girls. And um, I still have that fear of rejection in my life, but I'm working on it. Um, through the hum, I realized that I'm worthy and I'm loved. And I've never felt that before. All the men that beat me, every relationship, um, I didn't feel worthy. I never felt like I was good enough. And all that trauma and all that pain I carried with me for decades. I started drinking at six, and um, I really wanted to not feel anything, not feel any of the nightmares, the rejection, the trauma. I just wanted to numb myself because I didn't want to feel anything. And there was never any kind of religion in our home. So, you know, when I came to the home and the Bible was presented to me, I wasn't sure that God loved me. I felt like no one loved me. And why would God ever love me? But then Miss Donna started telling the story of the serpent and Adam and Eve. And I was attracted to it. I was like, wow, that is such a cool story. <laughs> and somebody said, it's very popular. I'm like, really? <laughs> and then that love for God took place. And the love to live for an audience of one was so powerful in me. And um, since my trauma and I had been beaten all my life, I didn't know what channel this was. So I woke up one morning, I just finished praying and I was putting lotion on my body and I was gentle. And I cried like a baby because I felt that's what God is. He's very gentle and he's very lo uh, loving. So. Um, that came from a man. That came from um, someone so, so amazing that I wanted to stay right where I was and I wanted to stay in um, his word. So in my active addiction, I used for 60 some years. The worst part was being homeless in Ocean City and prostituting and not having any shoes and um, walking on the cement and the tar and my feet were just burning and I had nowhere to go. So I slept on the sand. That was the worst. The worst part was of my addiction was um, I was a prostitute. I lived in a house up the street from my parents and I was the only woman there. So um, I sold my body to get one more and I didn't even care who I hurt and I had no self-worth and it was just hard. It was a horrible way to live. One of the things about being homeless is having nowhere to go, no food, no self-worth, doing anything to get one more pill of dope or one more drink. You know, I was homeless in Ocean City and I was living in an um, abandoned building and I, would, I was with a man who prostituted me out. And I remember walking out of that building and just feeling like my life didn't even matter anymore. So I remember walking on the streets of Ocean City and going to missionaries to get um, toiletries. I remember stealing and robbing from people. And I remember um, the hot, hot tar on my feet with no shoes. And I remember that so much that when I'm walking now and I have shoes on and it's hot and I just picture myself walking with God with my sandals on, doesn't matter how dirty my feet get, but I'm walking with him. And what a difference in my life and what a, what a transformation of my heart and where I want to be in my life. What I needed most from the hum is healing. And to feel safe. I've never felt safe in my life. Can you imagine that? And I knew that I was safe there. I got that feeling as soon as I walked in. And for women like me, 
who've done so many horrible things and, you know, not loving myself and always looking over my shoulder, I felt that I was protected and I was safe and I was good. I just felt good. Some of the things that happened for me while I was here is I lear learned to, um, and I wanted to learn the word, the gospel, the good news. And I started reading the stories and I was so infatuated with God. I was so in love with him. He was my, um, I hate to say this, but he was my husband that I never had that treated me good. And I wanted more of it. I was very attracted to what was going on there. And then like Donna and Miss Pam and Nikki, I wanted what they had. So in order to have what they had, I had to do what they did to get that. And, you know, I made a promise to God that I wouldn't use. And that was huge. I have nine months clean. And it's been an amazing journey. And I want more. I don't want to leave. This is good stuff. This is good healing stuff that you just don't get anywhere else. I've been in recovery houses. I've been in treatment centers. None of that works. Um, this is a good, safe place. So I want to talk about my son, Lee. And I thought that when I was pregnant, I would stop using. And I did it. And my parents raised him. And, you know, new relationships begin. When I graduated, my son said to me, he said, I have hope now. And he's never said that to me. He's never had a conversation that was so deep. And so I'm shaken. It's a, it's a huge gift for me. And I have new relationships with people that I've hurt in my addiction, in my past. Sorry. <laughs> Today, Marcia is courageous. She's strong. She's protected. And she, she's loved. And she's a child of God. And I feel that spirit in me when I'm praying. I feel that spirit in me when the newcomer comes into the rooms, in, into my room or on the second floor. And they're struggling. And I can tell her what I went through and how it's changed my life. I'm not the same woman. I never felt that anybody loved me, but I'm loved. And I'm protected and I'm safe. And I want to help the next woman. I've lived that horrible life. And I know if I can get to this point, that anybody can. <laughs>